Fair Bill of Rights, the underlying theme and focus on governance is that it should be based on fundamental rights and democratic values. So instead of looking at the blueprint as a set of principles or as a PR activity, we need to understand the existing regulations protecting those rights and democratic process and what the blueprint says uh, in terms of protection and, and, and uh, enforcement of those legislation. So this document is saying, whatever you're developing, whatever you're implementing, are you respecting fundamental rights? Are you respecting democratic values? I think that's one of the strongest points of the blueprint. There is, there is um, um, there's the AI Act, uh, which I guess yeah. is one, one EU, uh, EU-wide uh, initiative, which I guess the function that it would serve in, in re- with regards to sort of government services, I think it does, maybe it does two things. Um, yeah, both both those sort of these these prohibitions, um, and then I guess there will also be these these sort of uh, these requirements for for high risk systems, um, which a lot of the high risk systems will be will be systems that are um, sort of uh, developed and deployed by uh, by governments, and I think those um, those rules I think it's quite plausible that having those rules will be um, sort of will undergird and, and be kind of uh, be probably be helpful to um, to sort of uh, AI systems being used uh, more intelligently in public services, uh, where I guess what it does is um, one thing that it does is it sort of creates uh, some more some sort of more trust around these things, um, and so it might mean that sort of citizens feel more confident that at least these prohibited uses aren't uh, aren't something that's going on, um, which I think will be might might end up being important for uh, for sort of rolling out these kinds of systems, um, and then. Um, I guess we'll see how how the sort of um, this list of uh, requirements for high risk system how that ends up being operationalized. Uh, but at the very least, you know, it includes the right high level words. I think. Uh, I think at this stage, uh, and maybe you know, this is just a personal opinion, but a lot of the developments are actually driven by the private sector. So uh, uh, I mean, and again, let me talk a little bit about. Southeast Asia, there have been leading digital unicorns uh, uh, that uh, now, I mean, are spectacular success stories uh, coming out of this region. Uh, Raid hailing apps that are becoming super uh, super apps uh, or lots of innovation in, in the fintech uh, that were originated from Southeast Asia. Uh, if you Google uh, unicorn Southeast Asia, you will find Gojab, Grack, uh, Grab, Tokopedia, Lazada, and so on and so forth. And it's actually many. And these are all companies that rely on sophisticated uh, AI technology, uh, you know, of the likes of the Amazons and uh, and, and others. Um, so again, lots of developments. Uh, these developments could also happen because, uh, uh, you know, the region was perhaps, uh, you know, not such a mature market as other regions around the world. Antonia, it's a, a digital um, public service. Um, it's a, a name, but we will have also a, a physical place where you can interact with the system, with the digital system. For example, imagine a, a scenario where a person who don't know how to write or how don't know how to read a scenario when uh, that person have to interact with somebody with uh, with the voice okay and um, that citizen could ask some questions uh, on what he want to receive from the city hall for example i need the parking place or something like that the system will be very simple and will understand based on a vocal synthesis what the person wants and uh, the process will be facilitated by uh, a digital uh, function or a digital i don't know how to say it a, di- a digital public servant yes 